Good morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. Thank you for joining us on this special day. Yes, this is Pastor Davis's 16th year anniversary as pastor at the New Beginning Church. And we ask that you will click the share button and start a watch party with your family and friends because we want to really show him some love and make this be the most watched video for our church. I'm going to ask Pastor Davis to join us. How you doing, Pastor Davis? Well, Great. It's so good to see you this morning. Pastor Davis, please, we the members of the New Beginning Church would like to congratulate and thank you for your faithful and fruitful leadership of the New Beginning Church for 16 years. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. We know that you have been trusting in God and allowing God to lead you as you lead us on this journey. Yes, it was on September the 7th, 2004, when you became our pastor and started this journey into the future. Early on in your pastoring, in 2006, you stated, and I quote, God is allowing us to write our own history, and we are choosing what others will hear, read, and think in the future, end of quote. Now here it is, 16 years later, God has afforded you the opportunity to have reached many souls for him. He's allowed you to transform the lives of men, women, boys, and girls. He's even allowed you to develop a community of young people who have learned technology and music that will prepare them for future jobs. God has also allowed you to build a house for his people. And he's allowed you to do many other things. Yes, the New Beginning Church family is very proud of our little cross-shaped building because it is a constant reminder that it is, it is only through the blood of Jesus that he shed on the cross that we have eternal life when we die. Pastor Davis, you lead our congregation by opening God's word and then you live your life reflecting on the word of God that you preach. You care for us deeply and you lift us up in prayer. When we face misfortune, you are always there for us and you give us encouraging words to help us make it through. We really love you, Pastor Davis, for everything that you do. Even during COVID-19, you found a way to make us stay connected and the ministry is going forward. We thank God for giving us a pastor just like you. And with that being said, we want to praise and thank God for the man and the pastor that God has sent us. So thank you, Pastor David. Now our song for today is praise him because we are just praising God for the gift that he has given us in Pastor Davis. So help us sing praise him. We give all the glory to God.
Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another chance, another opportunity to come before you. Lord, we thank you for blessing us and keeping us and giving us one more day, Father God. We thank you for giving us one more year. We thank you for blessing us, Father God, and keeping us on the straight and narrow path. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us as we come before you today. We honor you, Father God, for 16 years for being God all by yourself. We thank you for walking us through the tough times and the good times. We thank you, Father God, for keeping us in our right minds and keeping us focused on your will and your way. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for the New Beginning Church, for all the members, for all the visitors, for all the family members. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us to walk as one. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us in this service today. Bless us that you will receive the glory, that you, Jesus Christ, will be lifted, and God the Father will receive all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us with our time together with you. Bless your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray that you keep all the glory. Amen, and thank God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us on this great day again. Thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church. At our remote location, thank you for being a part of our service on today. God has tremendously blessed us again, has blessed us to come this far and to do great things with him and through him. Amen? Amen. It's been 16 years, and I give God the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for allowing us to be together for 16 years. Amen. It means much that God has blessed us again. It means much that people are still following the word of God and following me as their leader. Thank God for the privilege to lead the New Beginning Church. Amen. Let me call your attention to 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 4 in the New Testament in the back of your Bible. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. I will say to you today that this is the time that Pastor Richard Booker would stand for my anniversary on this day. I want to thank Pastor Richard Booker for allowing me to stand in his place on today. I thank him for the privilege to honor to stand where he would stand today yeah, and allowing me, one who is, who is training under him, one who is, is being influenced by him, I thank him for the privilege of allowing me to stand in his place. I do not take it for granted that Pastor Richard Booker allows me to stand in his place on today. I appreciate what God is doing through him, and I thank him. And we want to give credit to the reason, one of the reasons why he's not standing here today and I'm standing in his place. It's because of the awful disease called COVID-19. <laughs> so we want to thank Pastor Booker for being kind enough to me <laughs> to allow me to stand <laughs> in his place on today. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 4 is where we are today. 1 Peter 
chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. When you found it, you will discover these words, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, New King James, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. You will discover these words. The elders who are among you, I exhort. I, who am a fellow elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eager, eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. My focus today will be verse number four, which says, and when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. I want to talk about when the chief shepherd appears. When the chief shepherd appears. The story is told that there was a, a preacher, a great pastor, who, who preached with great vigor, but he oftentimes ran into opposition, and great persecution. He was persecuted because he was such a great writer, but his church never grew past 150. Years passed by, and he was dedicated, he was influential at a church that only held 150 people. To many of us, a church that only contains seating for 150 people, to many of us, it is a very unsuccessful church. Later throughout the years, after his preaching was over, many stood where that building once stood. In the midst of ruins, they stood. And they remembered the pastor that th stood there for many years. And they said, if you were to look at the ruins of this building, you would conclude that this ministry was very unsuccessful. But if you look at the writings of the pastor who preached, who, who taught, the pastor who ministered from this building, you will come to the summation that he was a great pastor. He was a great man of God, and he was a pastor for that generation. I say to you today, when we look at our text in 1 Peter chapter 5, Peter exalts the men of God. He exhorts them. He exhorts them to the point where he re relates the message to them. As he closes out chapter 4 in 1 Peter, he says that suffering is taking place. Look at verse 19, chapter 4 of 1 Peter. Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. I want to say to you today, regardless of of who the pastor is, regardless of what church you are a member of, we have to be committed to doing good because we have a faithful creator. Suffering will come. Persecution will come. Prosecution will come. Suffering will take place. But you need to understand that we must do good and continue to do good we must commit our souls to him 
in doing good. For the God that we serve, the creator himself, he is faithful. Peter moves from verse number 19 of 1 Peter chapter 4 to 1 Peter chapter 5. In verse 1, he says, the elders who are among you, I exhort you. Peter says to those elders, this word elders come from the word, uh, come from the word to make sure that you are a part of a of the, the presbyter, the presbyter. It is the word that we find, and we use this word in such a way that it addresses the men who are mature. It addresses the men who are who are in leadership. It says to those who are elders among you, I exhort you. He says, not only am I just an elder, I am a fellow elder among you. He says to all the preachers, he says to, to all the teachers, he says to those of us who are mature in the faith, that whatever you do, suffering will come. You don't have to be a preacher to have suffering. You don't have to be a pastor to have suffering. You don't have to be a leader to have suffering, but whenever you stand for anything, suffering will come. You're going to have suffering. You're going to have suffering. Whenever you stand for Jesus Christ, whenever you find yourself in the righteous way of the Lord, you're going to have some suffering. He says to the elders I, among you, I, I exhort you, I exhort you, I, and I, who am a fellow, fellow elder and a witness, this word witness means a martyr. This word witness means that Jesus Christ has been one who has suffered for us. And Peter says himself that I have become a witness, a martyr to Jesus Christ. He says, not only have I become a witness of the suffering of Christ, I understand one thing. One day this suffering will be over. And one day we will receive a reward. Look at what he says. He says, one of these days I also will be a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. You see, suffering takes place now. But glory takes place later. Suffering takes place because we are willing to stand for the Lord. We are willing to call wrong, wrong, and willing to admit that what is right is right. We need to make sure, we need to make sure that we get to a point in our lives that regardless of what suffering we have to go through, we are willing to stand for the Lord, because we understand that glory will one day be revealed. Right. Yes, glory, glory will be one day revealed because of our suffering. We, we suffer hardships now. We suffer in dilemmas now. We suffer in the midst of things that's going on around us now. But one of these days, <laughs> this suffering will be over down here. One of these days, God is going to give us a great reward. One of these days, we will be rewarded for all the suffering we're going through now. Right. Let me just share with you, when you have a day in which you don't suffer, you have to check yourself to make sure that you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. Peter says, we are going to suffer for Christ's sake. We're going to suffer for the sake of Christ. And we're going to suffer for doing what's right. Yes. Peter says to the elders, I exhort you. I remind you that you're going to suffer. Not only are you going to suffer, I am suffering with you. I'm a fellow sufferer. I'm a fellow laborer. I am a fellow yokeman in this suffering situation. I have even become a witness. I have, I have, I have shared in this Mortem of Jesus Christ. In other words, I have come to a point in my life where I'm not just telling you you're going to suffer. I'm suffering through it with you. Yeah. 
not only am I suffering, but also I'm a partaker of the glory that will reveal, be revealed. Let me just share with you, you ought to have some hope. I know we're going through some dark days. I know we're tried on every side. I know situations are not what we would have them to be today. But I want to let you know that suffering don't last always. Let me tell you, trouble doesn't last always. Trouble comes by every now and then. Matter of fact, everybody going to go through some trouble. Everybody's going to have some hardship. Everyone is going to have some situations that you'd rather not find yourself in. But I want to tell you today, hang on in there. Trouble doesn't last always. He continues, he continues in verse number two to talk to those who are shepherding the flock. He says, shepherd the flock of God. This word shepherd means to feed. This word shepherd means to, to feed in such a way that people are built up in the faith. If we are called, if we are anointed, if we are saved for the purpose of leading other men, even leading them to Christ, we must be willing to feed them the word of God. We must be willing to build them up in their stature. We must be willing to bless them through the word of God. Amen. He says, you need to shepherd them means you need to tend to them. He says that even during this pandemic, the shepherd needs to be willing to tend to them. Needs to be willing to feed them. This word shepherding means that we need to be willing to care for them. Be willing to lead them. Be willing to guide them. And protect them. Well, preacher, what you protecting them from? I'm protecting them from the wiles of the devil. Yes. I'm protecting them from, from erroneous doctrine. I, I'm protecting them from a doctrine that is not right before God. The Bible says that if you, if any man teaches or preaches this word, that's any other word other than the gospel of Jesus Christ, move away from him. Have no part in him. We have to be careful where we eat. I know today during the pandemic, you can tune in to the New Beginning Church. You can tune us out. You can go watch five other stations or five other channels or five other church services. But beware, my friends, that you don't get caught, caught up in false doctrine. It is the way that the pastor, it is the way that the shepherd needs to undergird and protect the sheep. Whenever a shepherd is around, whenever a shepherd is present, the sheep have safety. Mm -hmm. We've been doing a lot of bike riding here these days, and the pathway where we take there are about five dogs that find themselves coming across our path right as we're passing. Mm -hmm. And when Sister Davis is leading, she want to turn around and go back. I say, keep right on pushing. Whenever one dog shows up, she gets really, really down and out. Whenever a second dog shows up, her mind is already made up. We need to go back home. But if we're going to be a success in our riding, we got to keep moving forward. Okay. As her shepherd, as her husband, as the man that God has given charge to protect her, I say to her, keep riding. If you keep riding, then you don't have to worry about your backside because the shepherd has control of that. You don't have to worry about the front side because the shepherd is looking out for that. You don't have to worry about com them coming from one side or the other. It doesn't matter if it's two dogs or five dogs. You have a husband that's responsible for watching over you and protecting you. It is the pastor. It is the preacher. It is the minister's responsibility to look out for what's right for the church. It is his responsibility to be the shepherd, to, to be those that one who, who tends to you, that one who feeds you, that one who nourishes you. I want to say to you today, 
that you need to understand. You need to understand that we're in a pandemic. We're not seeing each other face to face right now. But you need to understand that you need to hear the voice of your shepherd. You need to tune in every Wednesday. Tune in every Sunday. Tune in every Sunday morning at 9 because you need to hear the voice of your shepherd. Amen. Because he who is not diligent in hearing the voice of the shepherd will be weak from not eating good wholesome food. Amen. He who is not willing to continue to hear the voice of the shepherd in a timely fashion, he is the one that goes unprotected. Right. He who is not willing, who refuses to hear, he who refuses to hear the voice of his or her shepherd is not getting the care, the leadership, the guidance, and the protection that God has put before you. Shepherd the flock of God. He, he admonishes me this morning to shepherd the flock of God. And if I'm going to shepherd the flock, it's not always going to be pretty. <laughs> it's not always going to be what you want to hear. <laughs> if I'm going to be successful, and I believe that God has blessed me to be successful in leading the people of the New Beginning Church for the last 16 years, if we're going to continue to be successful, then I have to shepherd them and don't have to bite my tongue. I have to shepherd them. I have to rebuke them. I have to reprove them. I have to make sure they hear the word of God in such a way that it will change their entire lives. Mm -hmm. I want my life changed. Let me just serve notice to you that I have a shepherd. And I have to hear his discipline. I have to hear his words. Not only do I have a shepherd, I, I have some men who have surrounded me and protecting me and advised me from the wiles of the devil. Yes. He says in verse number two, first Peter chapter five, shepherd the flock of God. It's interesting that he says the flock of God, the people of God. He reminds us that you are not my people. He reminds us that you are the people of God. He reminds us that you are not my flock, you are the flock of God. He reminds us that I have not your ownership. I, he reminds us that I'm not the one who's over you. He reminds us that I'm just the overseer. Look at the next part of that verse. He says, shepherd the flock of God. He says, shepherd the flock of God which is among you. Serving as an overseer. I am the one who has been given the right to oversee you. Here at this point, this word overseer means that I am the one that God has blessed you with. That's why the man of God is known as a gift of God, a gift from God. I have just been chosen to be the one at this day and time. To oversee. This word oversee means that I am to oversee your life spiritually and physically as a physical guardian. I have been given this great responsibility. And I know you're used to seeing and hearing every day during this pandemic. A leader who will not take responsibility for anything that goes on in the United States of America. I know you're used to hearing a leader says that I don't take responsibility, even though I downplay it, I don't take responsibility. I know you're used to hearing a leader say, I don't take responsibility for any lives that are lost. Nearly 200,000 people have lost their lives. And I just kind of played it off as, as a miracle that will take place and poof, it will be gone. After 15 people die, so poof, it will be gone. It will be a miracle that will take place. And here we are six, seven months later and 200,000, nearly 200,000 lives have been lost. Millions upon millions have gotten sick. I know, you're, I know that you're used to hearing a leader who says, I don't take responsibility for any of it. 
I say to you today, here at the New Beginning Church, I take total responsibility. I take responsibility for the spiritual leadership of this church. I take total responsibility for the last 16 years of leading the New Beginning Church. For God has appointed me the overseer. He says, and when you do it, don't do it out of compulsion. He says, don't, don't do it because folk make you do it. <laughs> don't do it because people influence you to do it. Don't do it because people get on your nerves so much until they remind you that you need to do it. But he says, do it willingly. Amen. You ought to do it willingly. And when you do it willingly, you get joy out of doing it. There may be some other things that I get joy out of, but one thing I get joy out of is shepherding the New Beginning Church. I get joy. Now, that doesn't mean that I like all that goes on. That doesn't mean that I approve everything that takes place. It simply means that I am willingly accepting the responsibility of the pastorship of the New Beginning Church at this point in history. Maybe God will move upon the lives of some young boy to come along later on to move you farther than I can only dream of that can take you beyond what I can ever think of. But at this junction in my life, I am pastoring the New Beginning Church willingly, not out of compulsion and not, uh, not for dishonest gain. Look what he says. He says, make sure that your shepherd doesn't shepherd you out of this for dishonest gain. Make sure, he's talking to the shepherds. He says, shepherds, make sure that you don't pastor them or lead them or guide them for your own personal reasons, including dishonest gain, including dishonest money, <laughs> including being hungry and greedy for income. Yes, the laborer is worthy of his hire. You ought not muzzle, <laughs> muzzle the ox that treads out the corn. The, the minister ought to receive his livelihood from the ministry of shepherding the people that God has given them. And once God has blessed him through that ministry, he ought not be dishonest for the sake of personal gain. But we ought to be eager. We ought to do it eagerly. We, we ought to be eager in our doing. We ought to do it with eager, with vic, with, with, with fervor, with, with vigor. We ought to do it with excitement. We ought to be glad to do it. And I tell you today, I'm excited about it. I am excited that God has given me the privilege. I'm excited that God thought enough of little old me to bless me to lead to pastor the New Beginning Church for this first 16 years. It's a blessing. Amen. And I do it with vigor. I do it with eager. I do it with enthusiasm because I know that God could have used anybody. Other than me, God could have chosen somebody other than me. But God has given me the privilege. God has given me the honor. God has given me the victory. God has given me an opportunity that I don't deserve. It's an opportunity that I don't deserve. It's an opportunity that, that, that did not come to me because I got everything right. See, I was born on the wrong side of the track. Matter of fact, I was born where there was no track. I was born on the wrong side of the bayou. Matter of fact, I was born where, where there was no bayou. Matter of fact, that where I was born and reared was so far in the country, you have to pipe moonlight at night. I'm not worthy of standing here today. I'm not worthy of talking to you today. Matter of fact, I wasn't worthy of putting together a two-line sentence before you because God has blessed me, and that's why I'm here. God has placed me here. He's given me the victory to be here. And where I was born in a little town called Inverness, Mississippi, I grew up in Four Mile, Mississippi. You see, Four Mile, Mississippi is about nine miles from Bells Only in the country. It's about nine miles from Inverness in the country. It's about eight miles from Moorhead in the country. I mean, we play with lightning bugs for our activity at night. 
We rolled tires with water in it and created mud. And when we went inside, we were blanketed with mud. Our swimming pool was the, was, was the cotton field area, of the rice field. For when you come out to the rice field, they will have a big pump that's, 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 that's discharging water. We would swim in that water because it was crystal clear. It was brown water. We were out swimming pool, and where we learned to swim was in a water, in a, in a big ditch where the water flowed into the cotton field. I'm trying to tell you I'm not worthy. We lived so far off the road, we had to run to the school bus in the morning. We lived in this one little house with, with the six of us, four children in a pair, and we, had, we grew up with pump water. And when we got hydrant water is what we call it, what y'all call faucet water now, we call it hydrant water. We grew up, we were one of the first to get hydrant water. And even the hydrant water pump almost killed me. I'm telling you, I'm not worthy. Because we, when we ran, we would play basketball and baseball. And one day I ran, I ran to the pump to be the first one to get to the pump. And it had a, a belt on it with a fan on it that looks like an engine on a motor. It, it kept the water turning out of the ground. And my shirt got caught in that belt. And all of us were young, so we didn't know how to operate this pump. We didn't know how to start it. We didn't know how to shut it down. But as my friend stood there, and this pump caught my shirt, and it began to wind me up in that pump until the pump blade and the, the pump belt came right here up to my neck. I'm trying to tell you I'm not worthy. <laughs> and, and, and I remember I remember Robert Lee Irvin went inside and got my parents, and one of them came out and unplugged the pump because we didn't have sense enough to unplug the pump. And that pump, that pump was, was that, that belt on the pump was that far from my neck. It could have cut the big vein in my neck and I bled to death. I'm trying to tell you I'm not worthy. After that, we moved to town. <laughs> but before we moved to town, at the age of nine, we used to sweep the ground. You know, wherever there was a, a ground and, and the ground didn't have grass, we would sweep the ground. And in the process of sweeping the ground, after we finished, we would flood the, the driveway with water. And mama always knew when we were up to no good, for she would holler out and say, don't be sliding on that porch. And that day I said, oh, I got to get me one more. And I slid one more time on that porch and I fell flat back with a big old hole in my head. And for several years... I would be playing outside and the stitches would burst and I would be bleeding. I, I would bleed about a pill of blood before I could get to the hospital all the way from the country. Simply because I'm not worthy and God has, has blessed me. And because I'm not worthy, God has given me an opportunity. I'm grateful for it. We moved to town. I tell you, we moved to town. We moved to Indianola, Mississippi. Graduated from the great Gentry High School, Mighty Rams. Went to an all-white college, Moorhead and Mississippi Delta and Moorhead, Mississippi. I became one of two African Americans to graduate in the electronic department in 1983. I wasn't worthy, but God saw fit. Moved to Houston, Texas, and things just opened up for me. I'm just trying to tell you I'm not worthy, and God has made me worthy through Jesus Christ. And I, re I accept the responsibility. Mm -hmm. Just a few days ago, we heard those who are running from president. They accepted the nomination. They accepted the nomination for president to be a candidate for president of the United States. I say to you today on my 16th anniversary, the 16th day that God allowed me to stand, the second Sunday in September, he allowed me to stand before the sacred desk of authority and assume the role as the pastor of the New Beginning Church. I accept the responsibility because with the nomination comes great responsibility. He says in verse number three of 1 Peter chapter five, not only should you lead in a way where you become the overseer 
and you take on the responsibility. You ought not, you ought not. It says in verse number three, nor as being Lord over those who God has entrusted in you. It says to us who are leaders, don't be Lord over them. Don't control their every move. Don't act like we are their dictators. He says to us today that we need to make sure we teach them, feed them, train them, and be godly examples to them, and don't lord over them, but be examples to them. Now, being example to the flock is one who, who serves well. Being an example to the flock is to serve the people and serve God. Being an example is to lead by serving and to serve by suffering. Let me just say to you, those of you who want to be pastors, it is true that it looks better on Sunday than it really is. <laughs> I just want to let you know that, that on Sunday, pastors and preachers all over the world can make it look good because they're so smooth and what they do, they can make it look easy. But let me tell you, it's not easy being the shepherd. It's not easy to proclaim the responsibility. It's not easy to be the one who's always serving when others are not serving. If we're going to lead, if we're going to be a Sunday school teacher, if we're going to be a discipleship teacher, if we're going to be a leader of any kind, we have to get to a point in our lives where we understand that we must serve in order to lead. You ought to find somebody. I told you on Bible study night, Wednesday night, I told you that, that you ought to find a way to lead. You ought to find a way to serve. During this pandemic, don't allow it to be an excuse for a lack of service. Don't allow the pandemic to be an excuse for your not serving. Don't allow the pandemic to be an excuse for you not to be about the Lord's business. Don't be shiftless. Don't, don't, don't be those who, who will show up even online late. Don't be one who will not show up at all. And for God's sake, don't be the one who says, well, I'm late this Sunday. I'm not going to tune in. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, take this thing for real. Be a godly example. Amen. Our children are watching you. Sister Davis, where is that quote that I quoted 16 years ago that I don't even know anymore? Let me have your quote. I want to make sure that I quote it right like I quoted it then because I don't remember making the quote. But thank God for historians who will take notes and hold me accountable to what I said 16 years ago. I said God is allowing us to write our own history and we are choosing what others will hear, read, and think in our future. God has allowed us to write our own history. What our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, what our neighbors will see from us will be what they will remember in history. We are writing history today. We are choosing what others will hear. We are choosing what others will read. And we are choosing what others will think in the future. Amen. Timothy, uh, Peter says here that we need to understand that we need to be godly examples. He says in verse number three that, that we are not Lord over the people, but we are to be examples of the flock. Examples to the flock. We ought to be examples for the flock. I say to you today, the New Beginning Church, that I have to be an example for you. Because verse number four closes it out for me. Verse number four says, and when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. The Apostle Paul, as well as, well as Peter, oftentimes talks about a bruised reef. The Apostle Paul, as well as Peter, Peter here talks about a garland that was simply a twisted, braided reef. 
with flowers in it. But that wreath of twisted, braided branches and flowers was guaranteed to fade away. I came by to tell you today, when we walk with the Lord, when we obey what God has given us to do, yes. when we stand for the Lord, when we serve the Lord with gladness and be eager about our service, when we walk with the Lord and understand that serving the Lord is going to pay off after a while. Yes. When we get to the point in our lives, when we go in the room and close the door for the very last time, when they lay us on the side, when they fold our hands in service for the very last time, we still have a lively hope. Our hope is in Jesus. Jesus is the chief shepherd. That means he is the master shepherd. He is the shepherd that's going to bring about a crown. He is the shepherd who is and who will bless us. He is the master shepherd. He, he is the chief shepherd, Jesus the Christ. You see, you ought to obey the shepherd. You ought to follow the shepherd. Because even your shepherd has a shepherd. <laughs> In verse number four, it says, and when the chief shepherd appears... I stopped by to tell you on my way to the rapture that one of these days, the chief, the chief shepherd will appear. One of these days, Jesus the Christ, the one who suffered for us, Jesus the Christ, the one who died for us, the Jesus the Christ, the one who served for us, he is coming back again. Yes. You know him, don't you? His name is Jesus. He is the son of God. He is the chief shepherd and he will appear. His name is Jesus, the son of God. He is the God man. He is Mary's oldest child. Jesus himself who born of a woman. Jesus who was made by God in the flesh. Jesus who existed just as long as God existed. He got off in a place called Bethlehem of Judea. He came down through 42 generations. Yes. He walked these mundane shores. Jesus, the chief shepherd, he will appear. And when the chief shepherd appear, I know one thing. He will give me a crown of glory, yes. a crown that will not fade away. Yes. Not a bruised reef that's twisted with garment. With garland. It's not a bruised wreath that's twisted with flowers and weeds. It's not a bruised wreath that twisted with a vine. But he's going to give a crown to those of us who sustain well. Those of us who shepherd well. Good evening, warriors. If I don't see you anymore, I'm trusting in the chief shepherd to appear. His name is Jesus. They took him up Golgotha. They died on the cross, I tell you. Mean men killed him. Nails couldn't hold him, but he chose to stay there. Thank God for Jesus. He's coming back again. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because he didn't need it too long. Out of that third day morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. That same Jesus who got up with all power in heaven and in earth, if in his hand. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father. He's pleading my case. Every time I mess up and I repent of my sins, God give him another chance. Jesus is pleading my case. He's making intercessions for me, and he's making intercessions for you. But one of these old days, at the trump of God, one of these old days, at the voice of the archangel, Jesus the Christ, the chief shepherd, he will appear. Yes, he will. I don't know when and I don't know where, but my Bible tells me that one of these days, the chief shepherd will appear. He will crack the sky and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us who remain will be caught up with him in midair. The Bible says we will forever be with the Lord. I'm on my way today to be with the Lord. I'm on my way 
to be with him. I'm on my way to catch a cloud out of here. I'm on my way to be with the chief shepherd. The Bible says we will forever be with the Lord. The same one that died, the same one that rose, he's coming back again. And when the chief shepherd appears, it says it right here in the text, when this chief shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of glory that will not fade away. This crown of glory is a crown of honor. This crown of glory is a crown of prestige. This crown of glory is a crown that will never fade away. I'm on my way to the other side. I'm on my way to another place. A place of no more. No more crying. No more dying. No more situations as I see them. No more pandemic. No more 45. Thank God that I'm on my way to the other side. Where the weeping will cease from trouble. And the weary will be no more. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I'm on my way to see Jasper Walls. I'm on my way to see streets paved of gold. I'm on my way. And above all, I want to see Jesus. The one who died for me. The chief shepherd. The one who has taught me. The one who has trained me. The one who has fed me. The one who has guided me. I'm on my way to see the chief shepherd. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Will you go with me? Will you be there? I'm on my way to see him. I'm on my way to get in touch with him. If I don't see you anymore, it's all right. In the great getting up morning, in the great getting up evening, in the great noonday, I'm going to see my God. I'm going to see my Jesus. I am going to see him face to face. And I will forever be with the Lord. I take total responsibility. And I want you to take total responsibility today. For your soul have to be anchored. In the Lord. Your soul needs to be anchored in the Lord. Your soul has to be anchored in the Lord. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You need to come to Jesus just as you are. You just need to trust him. Trust the story of Jesus' death, Jesus' burial, and Jesus' resurrection. The door is open. Will you receive the story that Jesus died for you over 2,000 years ago? He was buried in a borrowed tomb and he rose from the dead. You can come to know him even right now. Trust Jesus as your only Savior. You can be saved. You can guarantee yourself a spot in heaven, even right now. It's not hard. Just receive Jesus. Believe in the story that he died for your sins. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. If you can just believe this story, you can be saved. Only Jesus can save you. Muhammad can't do it. Confucius can't do it. Aristotle can't do it. Einstein can't do it. You need Jesus. And if you're going to go to heaven when you die, you need to receive Jesus right now. Amen. Don't wait till next Wednesday. Don't wait till next Sunday. Give your life to Christ right now, today. I want to lead you in a simple prayer. And I'm asking you to bow your head and repeat after me. And invite Christ into your life. It's not about how good you are. It's not about how bad you have been. It's about what Jesus Christ has done for you. By giving his life for you. Jesus welcomes you. The chief shepherd himself says, come to Jesus. God welcomes you. The Holy Spirit welcomes you. Just repeat after me in this simple prayer and ask him Christ to come into your life. For he died for you. And if we're going to be made whole, if we're going to be able to turn away from our sins, we can only do it through Jesus. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. 
I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose again. I believe that you still live. Now come into my life and make me a new person. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And thank God. We believe if you prayed that prayer, we believe that you're now born again. And when you die, you're on your way to heaven. And there may be some who are listening to me who is already saved, but for some reason or the other, you're not serving the Lord. This is your moment. It's time for you to come to Jesus and repentance and dedication and trust him. The door is open for you also. If you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church or you want to reconnect with the saints of God, please inbox me and let me know that you believe that you need to reconnect, that you need to reboot, that you need to start over again. If you're saved, you've received Christ, you ought to be worshiping him, serving him with great vigor, with fervor, enthusiasm, and eagerness. Let me know that, that you want to reconnect with the body of Christ, with the saints of God. If you received Christ, let me know that you received him. And we will welcome you to the family of faith. It is time for us to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gift. I understand that this is the pastor's 16th anniversary. 16 years ago, God blessed us. To the New Beginning members, give your tithes and offering to the Lord first. Give your tithes and your offerings to the Lord. Don't break your tithe for anything or anybody. But once you've given your tithe, please, ma'am, please, sir, if you desire to give to this 16th anniversary, make it known in the notes that you're giving a love offering to the pastor. And you can do so by any of those three means that we have for you to give. You can give by Cash App. The cash tag is dollar sign NBC Souls. You can give by Zelle. The Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can give by mail. P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459. P.O. Box. 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459 Please give your tithes and your offerings first and then if you want to give for the pastor's anniversary please make a note that this is for the love offering and then if we will receive it and Sister Davis will be able to buy her some more water to ride her bike we thank God for what he has done for us this year. Even in the midst of the pandemic, God is tremendously blessing us and has tremendously blessed us. Thank you so much for joining us here at the New Beginning Church by our remote location. Thank you for joining us and you can continue to join us every Sunday morning. You can join for Sunday school at 9 a.m. Please tune in to these same stations by Zoom as well as our Facebook Live. You can tune in either place for Sunday school. And you can tune in as you have done this morning uh, for worship service at 1045 every Sunday, 1045 a.m. every Sunday. And please continue to join us for Bible study. <clears throat> for Bible study every every Wednesday 
at 720. Thank you so much. Continue to join us and we're looking forward to a great time in the Lord. We believe that God has blessed us and he's continued to bless us. We're looking forward to the next 16 years of being blessed by God and watch what God is doing. Please, ma'am, please, sir, share this video. Please, ma'am, please, sir, comment on this video and let other men know that Jesus yet lived and he walked with us and he talked with us. I'm gonna ask Sister Davis to come back up. I wanna thank her personally and publicly for all that she has done, all that she will do. Thank you for being my, my main critic and my best support. Thank you for being a part of the New Beginning Church as a faithful member. Uh, many times pastor's wives don't understand that they are members also. So thank you for being a faithful member of the New Beginning Church. Thank you for your unceasing work. Thank you for being a part of this service. Thank you for looking forward to, to being a blessing to the New Beginning Church and to your pastor that just happened to be your husband. <laughs> thank you so much, God bless you, and God keep you. Thank you to the New Beginning Church members for, for all that you've done for all of your support, your prayers over the years. Thank you for being a part. And to our many visitors, thank you for supporting the New Beginning Church by your attendance, by your finances. Thank you for being a part as if this is your church for buying into the vision. Thank you so much. Thanks to all the preachers and ministers. Thank you, Minister J.R. Richard for being a son here at the New Beginning Church. Thank you, Minister J.R. Richards, for being a part of our, our church. To all the pastors and the ministers, thank you for your support because we receive support all over this world. For the last 16 years, you have pulled us out of binds. You have been a blessing in your mentorship. You've been a blessing to all the things that we've done. For all the things that we've accomplished, we thank all of you for. And again, thank you, Mama, for listening in. Thank you, Mama Orr and Mama Davis, for being a part of our service. Uh, thank you for what you've instilled in us to keep working for the Lord. Thank you for, for who you are. Thank you to my family for your support, for being a blessing and being a part of the success of, of this ministry. God has blessed this church, the New Beginning Church, to do great things, and he's going to bless us to do even greater things. I want to say again, thank you, Pastor Richard Booker of the Mount Zion Church for allowing me, for the Lil Zion Church, at the Lil Zion Church for, for allowing me to speak in your stead today. Uh, thank you for being a, a brother in the Lord who has been blessing us in ministry for nearly 30 years for being a great supporter. Thank you, Sister Booker, for, for all your encouraging words and all that you do. Pastor Booker, I have served under your leadership, and I have served in a, in a way that in which I hope you have been able to say amen. And I give it back to you after this Sunday, so you can come whenever you choose. And I have been blessed to preach the, the 16th year anniversary of Pastor Matthew Alexander Davis. Thank you so much, my brother. I want to thank my pastor, my pastor, Dr. Richard Jewel Rose, for, for all that he does for the New Beginning Church and for me as a person. Thank you so much. God bless you and God keep you. This is our prayer here at the New Beginning Church. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John chapter 12, verse 32. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity, Father God. We thank you for one more year. We thank you for the chief shepherd, Jesus himself, 
We thank you for him being a part of our lives, for making life simple for us. Now, Lord, we ask you to continue to bless us as we move into our 17th year. We ask you, Father God, to give us wisdom, give us discernment, give us unity, and give us favor. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, and anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Thank you so much for joining us. Please continue to be a part of the New Beginning Church service. We look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. Thank you so much. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.